We are here and we are strong Let's be counted as we move on Make a difference, change lives As we tell our different stories We are capable, beautiful We are born to do great things We're unstoppable, incredible Cause we're differently abled Differently Hello there, it's yet another beautiful Saturday that we meet again for Able Differently, a program where we take charge. It's important for parents to take genuine interest on the milestone of their children because there are conditions that children acquire simply because of their parents' ignorance on their well-being. Today's episode we are having a story lineup that is going to highlight such conditions, so stay tuned. I am John Muriuki and me, Jairus Ongeta. Welcome. Welcome. Cause we're differently abled, differently. The love and care that Benson Mungai received from his parents while he was young made him strong enough to counter the stigma that the community subjected him into. Today, he is a businessman and a father who is focused in improving his life and that of his family. Born in western Kenya, Webuye County, meet Benson Mungai, a second born in a family of five. Mungai was born normal, though his mother noticed that he had a deformed hand, but that did not deter her from accepting her baby the way he was. With five fingers. I don't say with one hand. I have two hands, but uh, five fingers instead of the usual ten fingers. I cannot scientifically explain what happened, uh, but I immediately to Evi. Self-realization. His parents accepted him, showed him love, support, and they never gave an ear to the society about their son's disability. Normal children on endanga, able children, let me say that because I'm not abnormal. Mungai went to a regular school at the St. Joseph Webue in Kitale for his all levels. And it's during this time of his teenage life that he discovered about his disability. Si kuona kakuwa na different kubwa mimi na watu ingine growing up until mle sasa niliaza kuona when mle nilifika teenage kaza kusikia uaibu, najua na yaka mkono kwa mfuko, na ninini but my mom God because she really encouraged me to accept myself. He was looked down upon due to his disability, which the community saw as a curse. But through the love and support he got from his siblings, he overcame it all. It wasn't easy because you see, in a, in a, in the society back then, I think now the stigma manza kuisha with education. But back then, especially, I, I'm the first born son. You know, being the first born son with a disability. It uh, in a car, nikama, like a curse, uh, you know, some people feel like uh, maybe your dad or your mom did something wrong. That's why they are being punished. Nam toto mo yeni fastborn mo yeni disabled, disabled. So society liku many, you know, vitu ziki. I was not a priority. I was ule tumse wa badai tu lewa kama vitu zimeisha. At the age of ten years, Mungai was bullied and frustrated. That made him to become a bully in order to defend himself. Mother alikuwa natupakia nga lunch because kwetu ilikuwa nga mbali na home. So mother alikuwa natupakia lunch. Ndiyo usiende la time ya lunch, unafungua tutin, unakula lunch, unarudi class. O buli ya kakamu time ya break, haka chukua food yangu. Na wakanza kukula tu wapo nikiona na hawa ataenda lunch. So nika fight. That was my first fight in my life. Na nilichapo jama, nika chapo viboko, and then so I think uh, you it was it was um, it was an adaptation because I was an easy target for bullies. I needed to be a bully, you know, to survive. In 2007, he went to Baraton College to pursue a course, but unfortunately, he did not graduate. So after 2007 post-election violence, so you scrape. job so I was not able to continue with my college. Nika Nika Hacha, 2008, Nika Tulia Tuivo, and then 2009 I came to Nairobi. 
until uh, last year ndio nimerudi sasa shule i'm pursuing a diploma in film and tv production Africa Digital Media Institute Mungai is an actor a script writer a director and he has featured in different local programs because when i went to Tahiti i met uh, Catherine Omoyo huyo mama me by the way kwa industry sijakutana na so sijakutana na hiyo major obstacle because i'm disabled because uh, what i do i do it very well if it's acting i try and you know bring out the role the way it should be no one escapes challenges in day to day life mungai shares with us some of the challenges that he faces which he sees as a stepping stone to achieve his goals it was an ad nilikuwa nime it was ad it was a very good paying ad walikuwa na kunilipa vizuri sana it it was both print na tv but vile nilitumwa moja tunatumanga picha vile nilitumia huyo producer picha aliona tu face akona hii face maybe ameza do but vile alinita ni come set eh akona mkono akaniuliza mkono ilikuwa hivi vile nilitumwa picha nikamwambia eh hivi ndio nimekuwa na akaniambia you know you needed to you needed to hold a you needed to hold like a book on your hand and then a phone on the other hand can you do that nikasema yes but she need akunipatia chance maybe aliniambia eh hey, client atakata nini i think you to peke yake ndo nishai face kama kwa industry rejection nikaenda kuna place nyingine nilikuwa ninaenda kufanya kwa hotel as a waiter hey, it was it customer wanakudharao wanasema chakula yangu inaletwa siezi kula chakula imeletwa na mkono ya left siezi i cannot do this sitaki watoto wangu wakae na mtukaa huyu yani you know there was a lot of stigma from the society mungai is a businessman a responsible father and a husband uh, we started this business about 5 months ago uh, we started with my wife uh, so far it's just like any other business there are challenges in the business uh, so sijaona mtu amesema ati sikuli pale kwa sababu ni disabled but i okay i do you always do it nyaki kwa roho ya watu right but uh, the business is doing well it's picking up he urges the government to implement more projects for persons with disabilities in order for them to be independent and start their own businesses please serikali wafanye hizi vitu vikuwe rahisi kwa watu wenye wale mambo kupata cuz when you go when you walk on the streets you see a lot of disabled people wengi wanaomba some of them they wanaomba not because wana wanataka kuomba but because uh, waezi fa, uh, wajui wafanye nini i also think a lack of information in a lead to a lot of uh, people living disability wanaishi wanakuwa na very poor living standards cuz they don't have information one to it's very hard for them kusaidika his word of advice to persons with disabilities and the community at large is every cloud has a silver lining uh, maybe unaweza kosa unaweza kosa mkono but god ameku bless na na brain unaweza you are an innovator you can do something with your brain you can do something with your with your mouth you can do something with your legs you know just to to better yourself Let's take a short break and we'll be right back. Cuz we differently abled differently Cuz we differently abled differently Welcome back. This is Able Differently. The need for persons with disabilities to be treated equally with any other person in the community in matters of employment has gained traction in the recent past. Last Wednesday, Leonard Cheshire launched an awareness platform where different organizations were invited. Take a look. Unemployment in Kenya still remains high with many people trying to venture in self-employment in order to meet their basic needs. Persons with disabilities are the most affected group and organizations have come up to help in their job placement. Last week, Leonard Tesha together with other organizations launched Innovating Pathways for Employment Inclusion IPEI project that will run for three years. Basically I'm uh, making aware, making creating awareness among the employers on what each person with a disability the skill they have and what good they can do. So basically that's one of the key reasons why we were involved in this project. We have we have we have the numbers, we have the skills, but so we have the expertise of how to ensure that persons with disability are absorbed. 
The project is set to address the barriers to employment of persons with disabilities in Kenya. Women with disabilities will also be targeted because they face more challenges in their quest for employment. Uh, it's going to impact on us greatly if it is going to go in the way it is intended because women with disabilities uh, also are not, many of them are not in the employment either in the formal sector. Majority will want to go into informal sector where they do businesses and you, when you ask them what they do they say I, I just do a small business so this small business you don't know how small it is um, so we think that they are going to do an ex, to go an extra mile to reach a woman with the disabilities and a woman should be every woman every woman with every all different disabilities is going to be to be benefit from the project uh, we hope they are also going to create that awareness to the employers so that they understand what persons with disabilities or women with disabilities can do other than what they can't do. From here, for here we want to focus on what each of us can do. The consortium will work with the government to strengthen organizations that work with persons with disabilities as well as data collection. The ministry has been very, very sensitive on the PWD since its inception. I remember when the ministry started back in 2007, apart from the officers who were recruited through Public Service Commission, we had around six officers who were brought in because of their status. The private sector will not be left behind as it takes the largest share in creation of employment. From the private sector and from the employers, of Kenya. We support any effort and initiatives that will help to get the persons with disability in employment. The Federation of Kenya Employers, we stand for fair labor practices. And that means that Whatever thing that we do and champion and promote in the private sector is not only for the growth of business, but also to ensure that the welfare of workers are taken care of. And through this, we have engaged in a lot of uh, social dialogue uh, to ensure that we get it right in our country. Some have already taken the initiative and are employing persons with disabilities who are performing very well employed 100 persons with disability and this has been a journey and we have a target to get to 5% by the year 2020. Um, what we do is uh, we have made several and we continue to make several adjustments to our buildings in order to accommodate persons with disability because every person with disability is different and therefore there is need to actually customize um, whatever they need in order to be able to discharge their duties effectively. Stakeholders were also invited to the launch to share an overview of the project. I want me to greatly appreciate the consortium of partners led by Leonard Cheshire for coming up with this unique program that seeks to address the various barriers to employment opportunities within the private sector by person living with disability. Our prime duty as the trade union movement is to protect and speak out for justice for all workers, working men and women, including persons with disability. Honorable Isaac Mwaure in his speech applauded the efforts that have been made to incorporate persons with disabilities in employment. He, however, admits that still more has to be done. In 2014, we started an inclusion program under the National Youth Service where we have persons with disabilities, youth with disabilities being trained in paramilitary uh, course. And so therefore, for the first time, we have been able to challenge the discrimination that if you are a person with disability, you cannot participate um, uh, in, in security matters or paramilitary training. Uh, this program has seen uh, over 200 youth with disabilities, uh, primarily those with mild physical disabilities, majority of them are deaf, persons with albinism, and people of short stature 
being admitted in the national service. Very successful. The British High Commissioner to Kenya, who was also in attendance, emphasized on the need to break down these barriers that prevent persons with disabilities from employment. The barriers that are in the way of people with disabilities need to be broken down, and the United Kingdom wants to be at the heart of doing that here in Kenya. This is partly about empowering people to realize their full potential, and that is something that we are enormously committed to. And it's partly also about making sure that businesses have access to all the talent that is out there so that they too can thrive. In my own organization, the British Foreign Ministry, 10% of our employees are persons with disabilities, including 7% of our most senior management. So all the way to the top of the organization, we are accessing the talents of people because we have made the efforts and every business can benefit from that. Nelson Marwa, the Principal Secretary for Devolution, promised to support the project as government and urged other ministries to be at the forefront when walking the talk. It's important we go and support His Excellency the Ambassador on this. And you can count the ministry on this. And the Minister of Labour and Social Protection is the lead on matters of disability. We cannot run away from that. We are the lead. And therefore, we should show the world where we are going, mainstream. I'm very happy the Commission paid a courtesy call and we discussed a host of issues. They have also done their own evaluation on matters of disability. And they are saying now, look here, this one has been done, this has not been achieved, including employing sign interpreters in government offices. And we asked them to issue advisories to all ministries. Why is it that we cannot have sign interpreters in government ministries? So that uh, we should not, we should walk the talk. Because we're differently abled, differently. Kisumu Urban Apostolate Programs runs a program that focuses on street children and children who are almost going to the streets and they have communication and learning disabilities called LEAP. The program has helped hundreds of children with disabilities. Take a look. The ear sounds ear, ear, ear. ear. The need to have an inclusive education system in the country has gained traction over the years. Today, Children with and without disabilities do share the same classroom and are taught by the same teachers. Oh, show. Let us do it together. Oh, show. Children with learning disabilities, however, have more challenges. The fact that a child with learning disability might not be glaringly obvious is a factor that contributes immensely to this situation. With this in mind, the Kisumu Urban Apostle Programs, COOP, started a project to address this problem with a focus on street children or children who are almost living for the streets. Many organizations are working on street, uh, street uh, rescuing street children and uh, being that uh, we had a partner because we did a pilot before we did this and from that pilot uh, that we did we came to realize that there are many children not just they come to the street maybe it's not just because they don't understand uh, uh, they, they, they have challenges at home, or they, but there is also that component of the school, whereby this, in school you get like a teacher does not understand this child. Maybe a child is a slow learner. How, do, at, how does a teacher handle that, such, such a child? And that's why we are saying that there is a big difference with, with these teachers that have gone through the training. Yeah, uh, during our pilot, it was discovered that many of the children who have street connections also have a special education need and a communication disability. And that generally informed this project. It was discovered that about 65% of the children had a special education need and a communication disability. With an elaborate network that includes learning support assistance, language and communication therapists, child rights officers and violence prevention activists and teachers, the project has improved the lives of children in this community. So a lady just came out, opened up. Uh, she knew about a certain, uh, like a case, 
So when she reported to us, we went and uh, rehabilitated that child. After some time, we ensured that uh, we brought the family on board and they, they were brought and taught they were sensitized on the same. The teachers have told us that before, a child could not participate in class. But after the teacher was trained and uh, told how to handle the child, that is through ed inclusive education training, and also through child protection, how to be friendly with the child, the children are now opening up. The teachers, they know how to handle them. They are giving them space to participate. There are some children, they can't perform. The parents want the child to be number one, even top 10. At school, there's a lot of pressure. You didn't do your homework. At home, you didn't do your homework. So see the child, uh, with him, you know he cannot perform. Or he don't know that he cannot perform. You know, some they can't perform, but they don't know that they can't perform. So the child will just run away. Once trust is established with the community workers and the child accepts to come to the center, they are taken through assessment by IAC before they are handed over to the language and communication specialist. But once a, if a child comes into clinic, the way we work is by taking a case history from the parent to try and find out all the background information, um, find out what, what their difficulties are, what their strengths are, um, and then from there, if we think that we can help, um, we will spend some time assessing the child um, through observation, coming up with assessments, because again, we have no standardised tools that we can use, so we have to be quite creative with, with what we've got. Um, and then we come up with a therapy plan, and that will mean the parent coming in with the child every week but also carrying out the activities at home and then what we will do is obviously constantly review what we're doing if we're making progress we will carry on or if we think it can just be carried out at home or in school yeah in school the teacher and the learning support assistants take over they assist the special need children to make the most of education by working with them in the classroom. Uh, two. What is the one? Yeah. And the last one? Once they are here, we teach them just the normal curriculum. And uh, I have learning support assistants who assist me. Though I'm only one teacher, but I have learning support assistants. So, I basically teach grade one to three. And the remaining classes are handled by learning support assistants. Though sometimes I move there, but not frequently. So once they are here, we teach them the normal curriculum, just like other schools, the formal schools. This is because we are preparing them to formal school. Most of the children we are, use, uh, we are having, uh, most are maybe when they are in the, the class, you realize that some are having the hearing problem. So when they get closer to the teacher or to the board, is when they can hear what you are saying. But when they are behind the class, they don't get the, all that the teacher is saying. So you have to identify such children and then know how to handle them. And some are having a, a difficulty in writing. So you be their friend and then you assist them in, in writing by being their friends, and then they know that you are different from the teacher. You are also as a parent. Patience and sensitivity are key characters that learning support assistants need to have in order to earn the trust of these children. Such a potent mix of qualities enables the learning support assistant to be able to comfort the child when they are upset and encourage them to be confident and independent. First, you must, you must have that uh, attitude of working with children, the positive attitude. Lazima upende watoto. Like uh, when we were just coming here, I wish you were there. These children, almost all of them were coming, teacher, teacher, we missed you. So it means that attitude that you have towards the children. If you have a negative towards these children, they will hate you. If you have a positive attitude, they'll come to you, they'll tell you their problem, and you'll be able to assist them. Many of the children who came in without basic language skills have now learned fundamental social skills. 
like playing with other children, communicating their feelings, writing and speech, and above all, are doing well in their classes. And over time, we've seen, like now those ones in the non-formal education, we've seen them progress step by step to a level that they are now able to be reintegrated into mainstream school. And for those that we've already mainstreamed, they are really doing wonders. It's very good because we have learning support assistance in the school as well. So as the child transcends from, from the non-formal education center here, they go into mainstream, they meet another LSA to pick up from where this other one ended. And you'll find that this child, once given the opportunity to have the same lessons, to interact, to use the same learning materials we are using in class, to have recreational activities with the others, they come back and become even better children. Their performance becomes, uh, uh, their performance is improved. You find some even coming up to the exemplary level. They come from the limited performance too, as they grow up, as they come up. And mostly you find that in the social environment, there are now people can also mentor others. Yes, I have a child. Uh, at first, when I went to that school, the teachers told me that they wish that child would leave that school. But I told them, no, you know, the first, the very important thing first is that this child needs, the, he has the right for education. And you have no reason to tell him to leave the school. I'm here as a learning support assistant to help this child to ensure that he's in the same place with the other children. And as I talk now, that child emerged to be the first one in math. Because of the LEAP project, the target community has been transformed in many ways. One thing for sure is that the attitude towards children with learning disabilities will never be the same again. More awareness. Um, there's so much training that's going on and it's spreading, spreading the word about disability and children and I know having worked with some of the LSAs, um, lots of them report that they didn't know um, things, for example, about children with a stammer and after receiving the training and working closely with people involved in this project, they realise their potential and that actually it's worth investing time in them. Um, yeah, I see it as a very positive, positive thing. Supporting, and we, we call it, um, they have gained independence. So I'm hoping by the time we are finishing this project, we should be able to support many children who will have gained, who will have gained independence, who can support themselves even without having a teacher aid with them. Cause we're differently abled, differently. In the quote of the day, we take a look at an old saying that goes, learning disabilities cannot be cured, but they can be treated successfully and children with disabilities can go on to live happy, successful lives. What do you think? I think that's true, that any condition if discovered at an earlier stage can be corrected especially for the learning disability. If you help or discover children at an earlier stage, you can easily uh, work on it for the better than when you discover